Hi, and welcome to the show. Today we're going to find out why we need honeybees. And we're going to go somewhere you usually don't get to go. We're going to follow bees inside a beehive. But why do we care what bees do? Well, because bees make honey, and honey is the only food that people eat which is made by an insect. I mean, they don't have a restaurant. Hey there, hi and welcome to Honey's Outdoor Cafe. Today on the menu we got the honey, ho! <laughs> oh, we also have the honey surprise. If there's anything in it other than honey, hey, there's a surprise! Ha <laughs> ha! Here's a question for you. How much honey can a honey factory make without a bee's help? The answer is, there's no such thing as a honey factory. Honey can only be made by bees. All those jars of honey, on all those grocery shelves, in all those grocery stores, those are all made by bees. But bees do more than just make honey. They also help your garden, farms, and wildlife. So what do you think would happen to these things if bees disappeared? Well, we definitely have a lot less of them, because bees not only make honey, they help pollinate plants, fruits, and vegetables. That's a bee going back to the hive. Let's follow it and see what a bee's life is really like. Can you guess how much honey one worker bee makes in her entire life? In a worker bee's whole life, she will make only one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey. Kind of makes you feel guilty, doesn't it? Nah. There are three types of bees that live in any hive. There is the queen bee whose full-time job it is to lay the eggs. The other bees are very protective of her. There are the male bees called the drones whose only job it is to mate with the queen. And last, but definitely not least, are the worker bees. These bees are all female bees, and they make up 99% of the hive, and they do everything else that needs to be done. They take care of the nursery, build wax cells, clean the hive, gather pollen, gather nectar from flowers to make honey, and they protect the beehive from intruders. With all that a worker bee has to do, can you guess what a worker bee's average lifespan is? For worker bees born at the beginning of the summer, the average lifespan is about 45 days. The reason the bees work so hard because the most important thing to the hive is making enough honey for food so they can survive the winter. Commercial beekeepers try to make this easy on the bees by creating structures that are perfect for making and storing honey, like this frame and this beehive. That way, the bees save time building a hive, and they're able to create so much extra honey that we can take some. So, not only do we need honey bees, we need beekeepers. Hi, my name is Gene. I'm a commercial beekeeper from Los Banos, California. I own and operate nearly 2,000 colonies of honeybees, and each colony contains nearly 30,000 bees. I've been a beekeeper for over 20 years, and one of the most important things that you need to learn how to do as a beekeeper is to keep the bees gentle. Honeybees are very gentle unless they feel threatened. In order to work bees successfully, beekeepers use a smoker, and the smoker helps us to keep the bees in a manageable condition while we're working them. In order to make honey, the bees need to first gather nectar from a flower. They do this by inserting their, their tongue structure, which is really like a drinking straw, and they will suck up the nectar from a flower and they will store it in their little storage tank that they have uh, in their bodies. They will transport the nectar back to the colony where the nectar is then deposited into a honeycomb cell. The color and the flavor of the honey that the bees produce is determined by the flowers that they're working. Some honeys, such as sage and orange blossom, are very light and mild. Other honeys that the bees would make, like um, buckwheat, uh, eucalyptus that we make here in California, avocado honey that we make here in California is very dark and, uh, and somewhat stronger. And again, it's all a product of the particular flower that the bees are working. When the bees bring the nectar back to the colony, it is first put into frames such as these and when it is thickened up by the fanning action of the bees' wings, it is then capped by wax that's produced by the bees. Once we get frames and frames of honey such as this that fill many boxes, then it's time to bring it back to the warehouse and take the honey out. The first job that needs to be done is to take off the wax cappings that the bees have placed on the cell, on the honeycomb cells. This is done by a machine we call the uncapper. 
The uncapper automatically removes the caps from the cells. After the uncapping machine has done its job, then the frames are placed into the extractor, which is a large centrifuge, which is it's like a big spinner that will spin the honey out of the frames. After the honey is extracted from the frames, we pump it into a large holding tank where we either fill 55 gallon drums or jars such as this and it's ready for you to eat. Gene's family has been keeping bees for years. So can you guess what year the first man-made beehive was in use? When was the first man-made beehive in use? The first record of a man-made beehive showed up in Egyptian paintings in approximately 2500 BC. 4,500 years ago, the Egyptians had beehives. Tut, tut, tut. Well, unfortunately for the Egyptians, they didn't have suits like bees, and even though bees only sting when they're threatened, it's always good to be safe. That's why I'm wearing this suit. I'm not scared or nothing. <laughs> I'm not. Well, anyway, let's go deep inside the beehive. Quiet, we're going into the nursery. Oh, you woke him up. After a queen bee deposits an egg into a wax cell, they change into a larva and are fed by nurse bees. They are fed a combination of nectar and pollen called bee bread. Soon they metamorphosize into a pupa, and soon after that, a new baby bee is born. And you know what the first thing is these baby bees do when they emerge? They clean up their room, which of course is their wax cell. Then they start feeding the larva. They're only two days old and they already have a full-time job as a babysitter. Unfortunately, the queen bee's kind of short on cash, so their pay comes in honey. They don't seem to mind. In fact, there are some people who get paid in honey. You know, we've already met a commercial beekeeper. Let's meet somebody who does it just for fun. Hi, my name is Lisa. I'm from Belmar, Colorado. And some people might sail or fish for a hobby, but I keep bees. I got started in beekeeping about four years ago. And the reason I did is to help the pollination in my garden. I have fruit trees and a vegetable garden and lots of flowers and the bees really help that a lot. The one thing I've learned about bees is really they don't bother you if you don't bother them. As long as you're calm around them, uh, everything's just fine. You just have to be careful not to disturb their home or get too close to the hive. In the spring, I go in and check and just make sure the hives are in good shape, that they have lots of food and the queen's healthy. And then as the summer progresses and all the nectar's coming in, we just make sure that they have plenty of room to bring all that nectar in and start processing it into honey. And then in the fall is the fun part for us because we get to harvest the honey and we make sure that the bees are in good shape to start going into the winter. Well, the greatest fringe benefit of having bees is all that wonderful honey in the fall. Everyone loves to get honey. I love it. And it's also just nice to have them during the summer as a sort of a gardening companion, working in the garden with them. As a worker bee grows, her new job is the most important one, finding flowers with a sweet liquid called nectar and bringing it back to the hive to turn into honey. When a bee lands on a flower, she thrusts her head deep into the flower and uses her proboscis to suck out the sweet nectar. The proboscis has three parts that come together to form a straw-like tube. Because flowers have pollen all over them and bees have little hairy bodies and don't own electric shavers, they get covered with it. This isn't an accident. Bees make sure they have plenty of pollen to take back to the hive by storing some in their back legs called pollen baskets. She will fly from flower to flower doing the same thing until she's loaded like a cargo helicopter. She then flies back to the hive, drops off the nectar and the pollen, and goes back out for another run. Take a guess. How many flowers need to be visited by the beehive to create just one pound of honey? Bees have to visit approximately two million flowers to create just one pound of honey. Kinda makes you feel guilty, doesn't it? Nah. Oh, you're probably wondering how the bees found those two million flowers that made this jar of honey. You're not gonna believe this. It may look like bees are flying erratically through the sky in a search for flowers, but they're not. They've been told exactly where to go, by other bees. Many beekeepers had noticed bees acting strangely when they returned to the hive, but it wasn't until the 1920s that an Austrian professor figured it out. It's called the bee dance. 
The first dance is called the round dance. If flowers are close to the hive, a bee will walk in a circle on a frame just inside the hive, then it will stop and walk in a circle in the other direction until other bees join her and rub up against her getting the scent of the nectar they're looking for. When the bees leave the hive, they will fly in a circle around the beehive until finding the flowers. The next dance is called the waggle dance. This is done when the nectar is found farther away from the hive. If the flowers are found in the direction of the sun, the bee will waggle straight up and down. If the nectar is to the right of the sun, she will waggle to the right. And if the flowers are to the left of the sun, she will waggle to the left. So even though bees can't talk, they can communicate in many different ways. Although I don't recommend doing this in public because nobody knows what you're doing. What did you say that clover was? Oh, that'd be that one. What fraction of the human diet is benefited by insect pollination? One one hundredth, one tenth, one third, or all of it? The answer? Every third bite of food you eat is benefited by insect pollination. So the answer is one third. Why? Because not only do bees make honey, but they pollinate almond blossoms to give us more almonds. Not to mention apples, blueberries, cherries, cranberries, plums, squash, watermelon, zucchini, and many crops like alfalfa that help to feed farm animals. That's why every third bite of food you eat is benefited by insect pollination. So what makes up the other two bites of my diet? Powdered sugar donuts. So let's see how pollination really works. For a flower to create a seed, it needs the pollen from a different flower. Since flowers can't move around on their own, except in some scary dreams I've had, the only way to get that pollen is to hope that the wind blows hard or a bee or another insect covered in pollen lands on it looking for nectar or pollen. So a bee will fly over to this flower, oh, <laughs> sorry, and then we'll get all covered up in pollen and then fly over to this flower. <laughs> but what happens when an area is short on bees? Well, that's where this guy comes in. Hi, my name is Bob. I'm a migratory beekeeper. I run approximately 5,000 hives, with each hive having approximately 40,000 bees in it. Uh, many crops need bees. I move my bees wherever they're needed. For pollination purposes in California, we move the bees to almonds and melons. After pollinating crops in California, we load the bees and move them to North Dakota for honey production. Uh, we produce honey off of clover and alfalfa. How much surplus honey do bees make in an average hive? Here's a hint. It's somewhere between one teaspoon and 100 pounds. And here's the answer. Bees make approximately 80 pounds of surplus honey in an average hive. So let's figure this out. If on average, bees make 80 pounds of surplus honey, and it takes two million flowers to make just one pound of honey, and there's 30,000 bees per colony, each one making in their lifetime 1 12th of a teaspoon of honey, then Okay, they live 45 days long, so okay, you've got 30,000 bees, and they're making, okay, one twelfth of a teaspoon of honey in their lifetime, and there's 200,000 beekeepers, and I don't even have a teaspoon, and Houston, I have a problem. Okay, there's 80 pounds for surplus honey, and okay, um, what, what was it? <laughs> brain hurting, brain hurting. Not just people and bees like honey, wasps, hornets, and other insects love it too, and they will try to steal it. Unfortunately for them, they can't get past the guard bee. This line of defense protects against anything that tries to enter, even bees from other hives. Bees communicate with pheromones and each bee has the scent of the hive. The guard bees smell anything that tries to come into the hive with their antenna and if something doesn't smell right, there'll be trouble. Big trouble. Huh? <laughs> Now, guard bees, or honey bees for that matter, won't attack or sting you unless they feel threatened. So when you hear that buzzing around your head, they're not mad at you, they're not gonna sting you, they're just flapping their wings. Now, take a guess. How many times per minute are honey bees flapping their wings? The answer, bees flap their wings more than 11,000 times per minute. Wait a minute, that's uh, 183 times per second, wow. Okay, let's try a little experiment. I'll time one second, you at home count to 183. Ready and go. Time. Did you do it? No? Okay, let's try it again. Ready and go. Time. Can you, how far did you get? Ready? Let's try one more time. Ready and go. Time. <laughs> 
Those wings come in handy because one job a worker bee has in its lifetime is to cool the hive. They flap their wings at the entrance to the hive and blow cool air in the front door. That's better than my house. Actually, another thing about a bee's house is that you can eat it, or at least part of it. Comb honey is the ready-to-eat honey in the bee's wax comb. Also, people use beeswax and other part of the beehive to make a ton of different products. It gives you quick energy, which is why a lot of long-distance runners use it. It has vitamins that we need and antioxidants, which help fight certain diseases. But remember, babies under one year old are not allowed to have honey. So there's one thing you don't have to share with your baby sister. Well, I hope you learned a lot today. I learned that we need pollination because we definitely need food, and we definitely need honeybees. In fact, you may want to check out the Honey Board website at www.honey.com. And if you can't check out the website, you may want to give them a buzz. Or I guess you could make a beeline over to their office. But whatever you do, you don't want to bug them. And uh, well, thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you. See you later, pollinator. What, 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 what?